Book of Mormon Prophecy, a podcast series by Avraham Gileadi, Ph.D. 3. Who are of the House of Israel? Why is it important to know whom the Book of Mormon identifies as the House of Israel? What role do Latter-day Saints have toward the House of Israel? Welcome to podcast number three. It's called, Who are the House of Israel? I'd like to start with a scripture from Jacob chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. Israel is like a tame olive tree. Do you not remember to have read the words of the prophet Zenos? Well, who's Zenos? He doesn't appear in the Old Testament, right? Right. So, he must have been a prophet that was peculiar to the northern kingdom of the ten tribes, among whom was the, the house of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. And it's clear from the writing of Book of Mormon prophets that he was a Josephite prophet. He was actually called one of their ancestors by Jesus. And he talks about their ancestors, the prophets, in the scriptures. So Zenos, which he spake to the house of Israel, saying, Hearken to house of Israel, and hear the words of me, a prophet of the Lord. It's good that he's identifying himself, so we know who he is. For behold, thus saith the Lord, I will liken thee, O house of Israel, like unto a tame olive tree. Of course, we know the story of the, hopefully, of the olive tree, allegory of Zenos. There was the tame olive tree, which began to bear bad fruit, and the branches were dying. So the Lord takes three of the nicest branches that are still very much alive and plants them in different parts of his vineyard. If you think there were four, go read again, because there were only three. And that's also in Isaiah. And then he plants, he, he, he grafts some wild olive tree branches into the tree, and they keep the tree alive. But they don't themselves bear, ever bear fruit. Did you know that Latter-day Saints never get to establish Zion? We never succeed. We succeed in helping the house of Israel establish Zion. That's when it finally happens in the Book of Mormon. The olive tree are the both the natural branches at first, then the wild branches are grafted in, they don't bear fruit, and then later on the natural branches from the other three are grafted back into the mother tree and these and so forth. All right, so we go to a next scripture from from First Nephi chapter ten, verses twelve and fourteen, where the natural branches are grafted back in. And Nephi is talking about Lehi. My father spake much concerning the Gentiles and also concerning the house of Israel, that they should be compared like unto an olive tree, whose branches should be broken off and should be scattered upon all the face of the earth. And after the house of Israel should be scattered, they should be gathered together again. Or in fine, after the Gentiles had received the fullness of the gospel. Aha, uh-huh. so there we are again. The fullness of the gospel that is restored through the prophet Joseph Smith. And after that, he received it. The natural branches of the house of the olive tree or the remnants of the house of Israel should be grafted in or come to the knowledge of the true Messiah, their Lord and their Redeemer. Well, how do you think they're going to receive that unless the Gentiles to whom who are grafted in and receive the fullness of the gospel, they're going to do that, share that with them. And that's, that's what we're aiming at. That's what the scriptures are aiming at. As in 1 Nephi 22, 8 and 9, it says, the Gentiles nourish the house of Israel. He says, after us he is scattered, the Lord God will proceed to do a marvelous work among the Gentiles, which shall be of great worth unto our seed, that is, the Lamanites of today. Wherefore it is likened, because the Lamanites mixed with the Nephites, right? You remember the Book of Mormon. There were many apostate Nephites who mingled with the, became Lamanites. Wherefore it is likened unto their being nourished by the Gentiles and being carried in their arms and upon their shoulders. And we read that in our last podcast where the kings and queens, the spiritual kings and queens of the Gentiles nourish the house of Israel and bring them back. So here, these are considered to be nourishing the house of Israel and as part of the great and marvelous work that the Lord is doing. That is the house of Israel. The house of Israel, of course, is the Jews, the ten tribes, and Lehi's descendants by definition, the Lamanites. In this case, it's not the other way around. And it also shall be of great worth unto the Gentiles, that's unto us, but not only unto the Gentiles, unto the Gentiles, but unto all the house of Israel, in making known of the covenants of the Father of heaven unto Abraham, saying, Thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. 
It's these covenants that are at the base of everything. And when you read the scriptures, it's the ancient covenants the Father made or the Lord made with the house of Israel and with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, with David and his descendants. Sinai covenant, collective covenant, individual covenants. The covenants the great and abominable church got rid of when it removed many plain and precious parts. So that's our job. It is to receive the house of Israel members of these other tribes back into the Lord's covenant so that the Father can fulfill his covenants with their ancestors. How beautiful is that? What a marvelous stewardship we have been given as Latter-day Saints. And how is that going to happen? Well, we go back to 1 Nephi 22, 11, and 12. The Lord God will proceed to make bare his arm in the eyes of all the nations. Ah, so some kind of divine intervention is, is going to be afoot here. And the Lord is going to do something extraordinary. In bringing about his covenants and his gospel unto those who are the house of Israel. He's already given it to us, Gentiles. Ephraimites that have come through the Gentile lineages. Wherefore, he will bring them again out of captivity, and they shall be gathered together to the lands of their inheritance, and they shall be brought out of obscurity and out of darkness, and they shall know that the Lord is their Savior and their Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. So at the time this happens, they're going to be in bondage or some kind of captivity or scattering. The word in Hebrew is also just diaspora. Bondage, captivity, diaspora, they're all scattering. They're very similar terms. They're going to be gathered together, and we saw previously that they're going to be gathered together in an exodus from the four directions of the earth, as Isaiah and Book of Mormon prophets predict. And you remember how when the sons of Messiah converted many Lamanites, they were brought out of obscurity and out of darkness. So in this end time scenario, these kings and queens of the Gentiles that we talked about in the last podcast, they're going to be very similar, doing the same kinds of things as as the sons of Messiah and converting Lamanites of today, converting Jews, and converting ten tribes, the natural lineages, to the gospel of Jesus Christ and bringing them back into the Lord's covenant. That is the great end time scenario. That is the great and marvelous work here by definition, not the restoration of the gospel and priesthood. It's not the time of Joseph Smith. Isaiah is not talking about the time of Joseph Smith, nor is the Book of Mormon, except almost in passing. Isaiah prophesies concerning the house of Israel, 2 Nephi 6.5. There are many things which have been spoken by Isaiah which may be likened unto you because ye are of the house of Israel. So we get a definition of who the house of Israel is in the Book of Mormon. It's always the Jews, the ten tribes, and Lehi's descendants. And we have all these precepts of men. We've assumed this about this. and We've, we've assumed things about the sealed book. and we, we have these assumptions and these popular opinions that everybody's quoting and they have no scriptural basis, when you really analyze what it's saying about those things, very often an entirely different story emerges. The true story. And we'll get into other things later and, and, and cover some of those and, and explain them to indicate what the scriptures are actually saying. It's all based on analyzing what the scriptures actually say and going by what they tell us, not what we try to impose upon them. That's a great lesson I learned in rabbinic school. Isaiah prophesies concerning the house of Israel, 2 Nephi 6.5. There are many things which have been spoken by Isaiah which may be likened unto you because ye are of the house of Israel. The house of Israel believes and gathers home, 2 Nephi 9, 1 and 2. I have read these things that you might know concerning the covenants of the Lord that he has covenanted with all the house of Israel, that he has spoken unto the Jews by the mouth of holy prophets, even from the beginning down from generation to generation, until the time that they shall be restored to the true church and fold of God when they shall be gathered home to the lands of their inheritance and shall be established in all their lands of promise. Has that happened yet? No. What's it waiting for? Us. Is it waiting also for the arm of the Lord to be revealed, to be made bare? We'll cover that in future podcasts. So when we see them gathered home to the lands of their inheritance, the Jews, the ten tribes, and the Lamanites of today, and receive these lands of inheritance, then we'll know we're in business, that the Lord's program is being fulfilled and his covenants to them and their ancestors are being fulfilled. These Book of Mormon prophets are very solicitous for the welfare of their descendants. So they tell us, 
They give us these great guidelines to us who are to fulfill these things in the last days for what we are supposed to do. And they also give us, the Lord gives us two choices. Either we do it or we're out of here. He has no use for us. All right, here are three main branches of the house of Israel. Second Nephi 29, 12. I shall speak to the Jews and they shall write it. And I shall also speak unto the Nephites and they shall write it. And I shall also speak unto the other tribes of the house of Israel, which I have led away, and they shall write it. And I shall also speak unto all nations of the earth, and they shall write it. So we have three categories of, of peoples of the house of Israel plus other nations. It also kind of tells you that the Lamanites of today are going to be called Nephites again, because it says that uh, it speaks of the latter day descendants of Lehi as the Nephites. And God fulfills his covenant with Abraham, 3 Nephi 20, verse 25, the Lord speaking. He says, Ye are the children of the prophets. There you are. That is their own Book of Mormon prophets, including. Zenos and Zenoc and Nahum and others. And ye are of the house of Israel, and ye are of the covenant which the Father hath made with your fathers, saying in Abraham, unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. How? Because they have spread throughout the earth by design, the Lord used their apostasy and scattering to good, so that he could bring his gospel to the Gentiles, to any Gentiles who would receive it, so that he might redeem the entire earth. From the fall. And so that these people who accept the gospel, including ourselves, would become eventually part of the house of Israel, assimilated back into the house of Israel. And here's a, a mandate we received in the Doctrine and Covenants, a revelation of the Prophet Joseph Smith, section 98, verses 16 through 17, the saints' ministry to the Jews. Seek diligently to turn the hearts of the children to their fathers, and the hearts of the fathers to the children, and again the hearts of the Jews unto the prophets, and the prophets unto the Jews. Lest I come and smite the whole earth with a curse, and all flesh shall be consumed before me. Well, that's scary stuff. We have a role to perform to turn the hearts of the Jews to the prophets. That's their own prophets, because it says fathers and children. That's in parallel with prophets and Jews. So it tells you that the fathers are the ancestors of the Jews. And that includes Isaiah, of course. We have to turn the hearts of the Jews to Isaiah. And of the other members of the House of Israel as well, of course, to the Hebrew prophets, to those whose scriptures we have, and to the Josephite prophets that I've spoken about in the Book of Mormon, because they will believe those. You also have to do that on the Jews' own terms. You can't just giving them the same old pabulum that other Christians have tried to do and expect to convert them to Christ. It doesn't work that way. The Jews have to be converted through their own methodology, the manner of the Jews. Then you can talk to Jews intelligently and they'll, they'll receive you and listen to you. All right, the summary. The house of Israel are the Jews, ten tribes, and Lamanites whom God restores. Time frame is the end time whom, when God gathers and restores his people of the house of Israel. Moving forward, how should we prepare for ministering to the house of Israel? That is the Latter-day Saints' big question of today. And we'll be talking about that from the scriptures. They tell us. Next time we're going to talk about the manner of the Jews, how it helps us to understand all scriptures. I recommend the reading of the last my book, The Last Days, Types and Shadows from the Bible and the Book of Mormon. And we will see you at the next podcast, podcast number four. Thank you very much for listening. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. Join us next time when we learn Book of Mormon Keys to Isaiah. Why is it important to apply the Book of Mormon's keys to understanding Isaiah? Have Latter-day Saints been confused because they haven't done this?